Remember that time Ron believed that Harry gave him liquid luck? Liquid luck? Don't drink it, Ron! Felix Felicis, known in the wizarding world as Liquid Luck, is a magical potion that gives its drinker good fortune. For a period of time, everything the drinker attempts will be successful. So in the following scene, we see Ron dominate the Quidditch match and become Gryffindor's latest hero. But of course, there's a catch. Harry didn't actually put the potion in Ron's drink at all. Didn't put it in. Not only thought you did. This is a prime example of the placebo effect. A placebo is a treatment with no active therapeutic properties, and it's often used as the control in clinical trials to test the effectiveness of new pharmaceutical drugs. But the effect refers to the physiological phenomenon that usually happens to the control group who is given the placebo treatment. Their condition improves in a way that is often comparable and sometimes even better than the test group, even though they weren't given any drugs at all. In cases where the placebo outperforms the drug, researchers come to the conclusion that the pharmaceutical should be deemed ineffective. But why aren't they more interested in the fact that these people are getting better with no medicine at all? It's no secret that the healthcare industry needs sick people in order to turn over a profit. In a 2018 report, the investment banking company Goldman Sachs looked into the investment potential of biotech research companies who are attempting to create one-shot cures. Their conclusion? Cures could be bad for business. They stated, while this proposition carries tremendous value for patients and society, it could represent a challenge for genome medicine developers looking for sustained cash flow. Yeah, they literally said that. So should we really be surprised that nobody's putting money behind self-healing research? You can't exactly put belief in tablet form and sell it to patients. But that's sort of what placebos are. Some have argued that the placebo effect boils down to good old-fashioned bedside manner. And it's true that the doctor-patient relationship plays a large role in the effectiveness of treatment. Patients with optimistic and compassionate doctors tend to fare better than those who receive treatment from unenthusiastic ones. But it's doubtful that this can explain the magic of the placebo effect entirely. After all, there's something going on physiologically. And to get a better understanding of just what that is, we're going to have to dive a little deeper. A little deeper still. Bruce Lipton is a cellular biologist whose research gives us some insight into the mechanism that allows us to heal ourselves. Once upon a time, the planet was populated with single-celled organisms. The protein building blocks of the cell membrane acted as receptors and effectors that took in environmental information and responded accordingly. But after some time, these cells started to join together, forming communities that acted as units. As a means of survival, special cells were tasked with acting as a centralized info processing system, or what we would call a brain. In this way, highly evolved animals were able to take in even more information from the environment and relay it to all of the cells throughout the body. This was great for organizing the flow of signal molecules that regulate the cell's behaviors, but it also meant that individual cells had to relinquish control to the brain. And as proud owners of these brains, we can all attest that sometimes our mind generates emotions that are unrelated to our environment and definitely not necessary for our survival. And these emotions are so strong that they have the ability to override the system. So that's great news, right? We can just think happy, healthy, positive thoughts to override the system and cure ourselves of any disease. Well, not exactly. There's an important distinction to be made about the instructions that our mind is sending to the rest of our body. Some are coming from our conscious mind, but most are coming from our subconscious mind. And unfortunately, the one that we have control over is only driving the bus about 5% of the time. Our conscious mind is where we generate thoughts, but our subconscious mind is actually where most of our instructions are coming from, whether we realize it or not. Our subconscious mind acts out of habits and experiences that are formed over a lifetime, but most of which are programmed before we even reach adolescence. It's where we store all of our fears and past traumas, so it's no surprise that it might be operating under disempowering programs, which conflict with the best intentions of our conscious mind. But it's not all doom and gloom. Lipton believes that these programs can be easily overwritten through things like meditation, hypnotherapy, and various other forms of energy psychologies. 
But how could these woo-woo sounding modalities possibly work better than the chemicals that directly alter the functions and behaviors of particular cells? Well, it turns out that cells respond much better to energy signals than they do to chemical signals. When a chemical bond is made, most of the cell's energy is wasted through chemical coupling. So very little energy is left to take in information and respond to the signal. On the other hand, energy signals link with the cell's available energy to relay environmental information, which according to Oxford biologist C.W.F. McClare, makes them 100% more efficient at receiving and responding to signals. So now the placebo effect results aren't such a mystery. We see why simply thinking our health will improve can be just as, if not more powerful, than a chemical telling our cells to do something different. After all, thoughts are just energetic vibrations. Now, all of this isn't to say that pharmaceuticals shouldn't have a place in modern medicine, or that every disease can be cured simply by positive thinking. But it is important to recognize that we have powerful internal resources to call upon and integrate into our overall health. Humans have an innate desire to believe in magic, that's why it's so tempting to turn to magical pills and potions when something in our life isn't going the way we want it to. But just like we saw before, magic doesn't necessarily require wands and spells. We're the drivers of our biology, and we have the ability to rewrite our data. The magic is already within us.